One of the world's most crucial trade routes, the Suez Canal, is under threat from Yemeni rebels. Militants who support Hamas who've been attacking ships passing through the Red Sea. This week, a Norwegian oil tanker was hit by anti-ship missiles and caught fire. Houthi military leaders claim they're acting in solidarity with Palestinians. And that all of the targets have some connection to Israel, but that's far from clear. And experts are warning if this continues, it could have a major impact on the cost of pretty much everything. And the reason? Seven of the 10 biggest commercial shipping companies have decided the risk just isn't worth it. Those seven companies make up two thirds of the global shipping market. And in many cases, instead of going their normal route, they're making the extremely costly decision of going all the way around the entire continent of Africa, just to avoid the trouble. The Suez Canal is by far the quickest sea route between Asia and Europe, and it's an important route from Asia to the Americas as well. Any ship passing through the Suez Canal has to come through the narrow passage between Yemen and Africa, called the Beb El Mandeb Strait, not far from Houthi-controlled territory in Yemen, and where most of these attacks have taken place. And it saves you about 25% of the time um, on the journey between Asia and Europe. So it's a huge vital trade link. Here's just how vital it is. About 12% of all global trade passes through this canal, including 30% of the world's container shipments. We're talking about a trillion US dollars worth of goods every single year, from clothing to electronics to cars. I mean, you should go to a store and just look around. Anything on the shelf in a store would have come on a container ship. I'm just looking around the room at me right now. What am I, the books? Uh... This microphone, this computer mouse, like everything uh, is shipped in a container ship. It's also a major route for oil. About 10% of global oil shipments flow through this canal. Just to give you an idea, in the first half of 2023, that was about 9 million barrels a day. Europe may be most affected by oil disruptions because a significant amount of their imports arrive via the Suez Canal even more since they stopped taking oil from Russia. And there aren't really many good alternatives. You can't just send all these goods by air, if you consider the massive carrying capacity of these ships. For example, the world's largest cargo plane is 84 meters, or about 275 feet long, and can carry a few hundred thousand pounds of cargo. But compare that to the largest container ships. They're somewhere between 275 or 400 meters, or 900 and 1300 feet long, and can carry hundreds of millions of pounds. Every other alternative is really expensive. Some of the biggest shipping companies that have pulled out of the area are now diverting their ships around the Cape of Good Hope on the southern tip of Africa. Sailing from Asia to Europe via the Cape of Good Hope instead of the Suez Canal is a significant diversion. This route adds more than 5,000 kilometers to a journey from Singapore to Rotterdam, for example, and about 10 days to the trip. If something takes 25% longer in a shipping network, that's 25% less supply of capacity for the shipping network. That means when you reduce supply, prices can go way up. You can imagine an extra 5,000 or so kilometers, that's a lot of extra fuel. Here's the thing, the cost to pass through this canal has already been going up steadily for months since the Israel-Hamas war started because ships have to notify their insurers when they're sailing through a high-risk area. Obviously, ships have to be insured. Um, if you are transiting one of these areas, you may have to pay an additional premium depending on who, who you're insured with. Just this week, a group of prominent marine insurers widened the area in the Red Sea they deem to be high risk, meaning more ships will have to pay those premiums. So at this point, shipping companies have a tough choice to make. They either face the risk of traveling through the Red Sea and the increased insurance costs that comes with it, or they divert their vessels through other much longer routes, which also creates a domino effect, messing up these companies' itineraries, clogging up the entire chain all the way down. Either way, their costs go up. We're, we're gonna see prices go up two to three X 
for the price of shipping things. And if the cost of shipping goes up, so does the cost of everything on those ships. This isn't the first time passing through the Suez Canal has been an issue. You probably remember the Ever Given debacle just a couple of years ago. A giant container ship wedged from bank to bank, blocking one of the world's most important shipping lanes. Reports estimate that incident held up nearly $60 billion worth of trade. Now, at the time, all travel through the canal was blocked. No one could get through, but it also only lasted six days. This conflict, so far, has no end in sight. I mean, they're talking t tens of billions of dollars worth of costs, and that's just in the shipping companies. When you talk about, hey, multiply that forward because the prices of everything are increasing downstream. While the impact on the price of goods may take a little longer to trickle down, the impact on oil is already being felt. Energy giant BP is now the latest to pause sending ships through the Red Sea causing both oil and European natural gas prices to rise. All of this comes at a time when governments around the world are trying to get a hold on inflation. And many Western economies like Canada and much of Europe are increasingly worried about falling into a recession. The timing really couldn't be worse. We're, we're trying to see economies recover, right? We, we, we've gone through this period of inflation. We've gone through this period of rising interest rates around the world. Uh, and, and Canada has been teetering on the edge of a recession for a while now. And yet you have something like this that can come along and really throw things out, out of kilter. Again. Supply chain issues were a big part of the reason inflation spiked in the first place. In early 2020, a whole range of industries were flung into a state of chaos. There's plenty to eat and drink on most shelves of the grocery store, but still no toilet paper and a thin supply of canned goods, rice and ramen. The supply chain can't keep up with the demand. After almost four years, those systems are recovering. But the question is, can they withstand another shock? And I think, you know, the lesson of the last four or five years is just how fragile the international supply chains really are. We call them a supply chain. They're barely a, a fragile web, to be honest. The question is, what happens next? It's too soon to tell exactly how far the ripple effect may be felt, but there is work underway to dampen it. Well, the U.S. has announced a new international military task force to try and stop attacks on ships in the Red Sea. Several countries have joined, including Canada. Navy ships are now patrolling the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden to shoot down drones and protect vessels from attacks, but will it be enough? That doesn't really get people excited to go ship, uh, sail a ship through the, through, the, through the region if there's missiles being fired back and forth. So I could see this lasting. Um, quite some time. The Houthis say they have no plans to back down. One senior official writing in a post on X, even if America succeeds in mobilizing the entire world, our military operations will not stop, no matter the sacrifices it costs us. And the longer this goes on, the more people all over the world are likely to feel it.